uh, you, I think, uh, Richard, believe you have a disproof of God's no, existence. No, I don't. I don't. That, you were wrong when you said that. I, I, I constructed in the God delusion a seven-point scale, um, yes. of which one was I'm, I, I, I know God exists, uh, seven was I know God doesn't exist, and I called myself a six. Well, why don't you call yourself an agnostic, then? I do. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think it's a... I think it's you a are rather, described as I the world's rather, most famous <laughs> atheist. Well, not by, <laughs> <laughs> not by me. Not by me. Can I ask you to, to right, spell a, out your I'm argument? I'm a 6.9. Your, your Boeing... <laughs> what is atheism, first of all? Disbelief or lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. What is a religion? The belief in and worship of a superhuman power or powers, especially a god or gods. Now take a look at this second definition given right here. A particular system of faith and worship. Now those last two words right there are all important whenever it comes to defining atheism as a religion or not. Because atheism is a faith, but it does not include worship. What is an agnostic? A person who believes, now catch these words right here, very important, a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena. And then he goes on to say this, which I believe is totally incorrect, a person who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. But the very fact that anyone believes something, as formerly stated, that means that they have a type of faith. I do agree with the famous director James Cameron whenever he said, I've sworn off agnosticism, which I now call cowardly atheism. I've come to the position that in the complete absence of any supporting data whatsoever for the persistence of the individual in some spiritual form, it is necessary to operate under the provisional conclusion that there is no afterlife and then be ready, now listen, and then be ready to amend that if I find out otherwise. Well, by then, James, it's going to be far too late. You're already told by the Creator Himself, Jesus Christ, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, believe in Jesus. Well, there's also believing what Jesus said. And he told us there's a heaven and there's a hell after this life. As a former atheist, I claim to not believe in God. This did not place me in the realm of not believing in anything, only in believing that there was no God. Though I had no religion, I did have a belief that God did not exist. And this is why I argue that atheism is not a religion, but it most certainly is a belief. Once again, I'll bring you right back to this defining a religion, and this is what separates a religion from atheism, a particular system of faith, which atheism is, it's a belief that there is no God, a particular system of faith and worship. Now, many would say, well, an atheist worships himself or whoever. Well, that may be true, but by definition, Christianity is a religion. Even in the book of James, it speaks of having a pure religion. And that's alluding to Christianity as we know it today. So Christianity is a religion. Atheism is not a religion, but it is a faith. It is a belief in there not being a God. The very same is with agnosticism. A person who believes, who believes, has faith that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena. And what fools such people are, I always think to myself whenever they say like something like that, well, there is no evidence of God. And then they get into the afterlife and they realize every single bit of creation points to the creator. It was literally, it's, right, it's not even right in front of their face. It's everywhere around them. Everywhere they turn, they see evidence every moment that they exist of the great creator. And they have denied him and denied him and denied him and denied him. Romans 1.20 tells us, For the invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world, from the very beginning, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We know that God is omniscient because he tells us the future in prophecies. He can tell us things in which, and it says all the time about Jesus, that, and he knew their thoughts. Simon Peter, he said to him, 
Lord, you know all things. So we know about his omniscience, but we also know about his omnipotence, his great and seemingly infinite power, because we can see creation itself, the whole universe. Humanity is thereby left with faith in either God's existence or non-existence. To claim no belief whatsoever is ludicrous. Agnosticism is simple semantics, a play on words here. If a man does not outright assert his belief in God, he is biblically in the camp of unbelief. And I want all agnostics to realize this, like James Cameron, I want for them to realize this, that there are no gray areas. God is not going to wait for you to enter into the next life and then let you choose. Right now, today is the day of salvation. Right now, you see his power. Right before you, you see the evidence of the great creator. You're told about him in the most famous book in the whole world, about the most famous person in the whole world, and yet you still deny and deny and deny. You may hear some atheists or agnostics attempt to take the position of doubting Thomas from the Bible. Those who claim doubting Thomas was an agnostic failed to realize he remained with the disciples after Christ's resurrection. He did not desert them in total unbelief, only doubted whether their personal assertions were true. His belief in God never wavered. His affiliation with Christ and his followers was never in question. Scripture only notes a brief time of doubting on the young disciple Thomas on his part during such a traumatic and life-threatening period. Their lives were on the line. They were going to start hunting after these disciples of Christ. Very traumatic, and Thomas was probably no older than 30, 31, 32 years old at the time. Those who live their lives apart from God, his son, his spirit, his will, his commands, his church, all the while claiming to be waiting for more evidence before they believe will only find damnation in the end.